Hello all my crafty people out there. It is time for our project this week. And if you haven't been here before, my name is Stephanie. I upcycle clothing, generally thrifted items from my local stores and uh, make either new clothing or accessories. So this week I have picked up a couple of things. There's a cute little lady at uh, my office that wears this adorable little dress it's a sweater at the top and then it's a looks like a man's shirt at the bottom of course she bought it made that way i'd like to make one so i have picked out this sweater it's not anything special it's kind of a neutral color and um the only problem i have with it is it's a little long so i think we're going to give a try at shortening this sweater to match what we want uh, or what I want for this dress because I'd like to keep the hemline but I need to shorten it so we're gonna see if this works on the serger fingers crossed and then what I'm using for the bottom to make the skirt or the bottom of the dress is this button-down and this button-down actually fits me pretty good it's not a very big button-down but that's okay because I don't want a lot of fullness in the skirt I just want to create a skirt and of course it will be longer than this but because I'll use the bottom half of the shirt for the skirt and then the debate is this has kind of a um, it's not a full sleeve it's probably about a three-quarter sleeve so the debate for me is whether or not I'm going to add the end of this sleeve to it to kind of complete the look I don't think I'm going to add the collar um, that's not of interest to me then it would really look like I was just wearing the shirt underneath there but um, that's the plan <laughs> And you know how that always goes. So let's have some fun, get to the table, see how this works out. Okay, I have put the sweater on and I've safety pinned up to where I think I want the length to be. In other words, kind of like a hem. So this is how long I want it to be. And I'm going to have to take out... If I insert my ruler here, I get two and a quarter. So about four and a half inches all together in this fold that I'm going to be taking off. Now it says typical sweater fabric and it's light. So I thought to try and make the cutting a little better, a little easier, and also a little more secure that I would use the stuff we've used on quite a few projects recently. The... Um, the interfacing that's iron on and I went ahead and I tested it on one of the folds here and it works great what I want to do is put this one inch of interfacing around the area that I'm going to cut both from the bottom and from the top and I'm going to follow the lines in this sweater I think the lines will be perfect as far as following those to keep a straight line so I'm going to take it turn it inside out iron on that interfacing on the line that I want to stop at or cut at and then we'll be able to cut both the pieces and I think we can serge it again I'm going to test that on the piece that we remove just to make sure that um, we can and I think with that interfacing it'll make it much simpler to uh, serge as well as it'll give it a nice stable non stretchy piece not that a serger doesn't have a problem with serging a stretchy piece but or not that it does, uh, doesn't does like a good stretchy piece, but I think this will make it a cleaner piece altogether. So let me go iron on uh, the interfacing on the two spots, this one, and then back here where we're going to cut it off. One more thing before I go and iron those strips on. I wanted to show you how I was getting where I'm going to put those strips. You can't probably, you might not be able to see these pins. But when it was folded, and this part here was folded, then I measured the amount from the fold line to the neckline, and I got about um, nine and a half. Actually, it was about 10. So what I did is I measured 10 and a half down from that neckline to where I want, giving myself a half inch seam allowance. Then I measured from the bottom to the top of the fold line which again is just subtracting what I want to remove 
and it was like nine and a half. So again, I added a half inch seam allowance and I went from the peak of the bottom because it does curve to the 10 mark here. And I just marked the stripes uh, with a pen, a safety pen, because I'm going to try and use those stripes to, um, to iron on the stripping and make sure that we stay on those stripes. That way I know it's an even cut all the way around and um, again the interfacing will keep it from fraying. Fingers crossed. Okay, this is a look from the inside where I uh, ironed on the interfacing, which is kind of like going to prevent our stretch and also going to give us stabilization to keep it from fraying. And this is where it overlapped and this is where it was out of line a little bit, but it should be pretty straight all the way across front and back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down the center of these um, interface lines and take out this piece. This is the piece we're going to test our surging on, make sure everything's right as far as sewing goes, so that when we put them back together, we won't have any confusion or questions. So the best thing for me to do on this, I'm not going to use the rotary cutter, I'm just going to use my scissors. I think that'll be more efficient. And I'm just cutting a kind of like a hole over here right down the center of this, like I said, this tape. And I'm going to just cut it around. And when I'm done, then we'll start the process of figuring out how much of the shirt we need. Alright, as you can see, we've got our two pieces here, and I'm laying them right, it doesn't matter what side, I'm just laying them together with the, um, what I will use as a seam allowance overlapping, right there. And then I thought, I want to know how long I want the dress, and the easiest way to do that would be a dress I already have. So here's my fun pink dress that I did out of a shirt. I will flash that up on the screen if I remember. Hopefully, I will. And, <coughs> sorry. I put it across the, t the bottom down here. And then, I take my tape measure. And I can feel where that ridge is. Where those seams are meeting. And, I kind of get a gauge. It's about 22 inches. That is with the tape measure right over the top of that seam allowance, which would be fine because that means I'm, I'm going to need that for the seam allowance. So I think I need about 22 inches to add to this. And this is why I'm doing it from this point. When I sew these together, I want to sew the shirt, the man's, the, the portion of the shirt that I want to add as part of the bottom of the dress at the same time, making one continual seam and then being able to just flip it down and probably top stitch. And I think I will probably top stitch the seam actually towards the top so that the bottom will lay nice and flat and it won't have any kind of bulge right there, hopefully. That's the plan. Y'all know how that goes. So now I need to decide, I need 22 inches of this shirt. This is the man's shirt that we're gonna put under here first First thing I want to do is make sure I got enough. And I got plenty. So it will reach the width and it'll be it'll be big enough where it'll have a little extra so I can either trim it down or give it a little bit, bit of gathering. We'll see. But the point I'm trying to make here, or the measurement I'm trying to get here, is the 22 inches. 
so right there is 23 so I have more than enough to cut off and I you know what it's going to go into the sleeves over here so I may have to um, trim it down a bit to get rid of that shorter part that would be under my sleeves okay I went ahead and took the pocket off because we knew that was going to be kind of a given it was definitely not going to work I'm going to try and leave this part whole for right now in other words I'm not going to cut up the side seams but I am going to take the sleeves off because whether I use them to add to this volume or um, or put them on the bottom of the uh, sleeves that are already on the sweater you know like as cuffs I still need to take these off so I'm going to take these off next and then we will figure out exactly how we're going to cut this puppy up for the bottom of the dress and it may just be 22 inches is kind of like a kind of a maximum length for me I think I could go with 21 inches and that one inch above you know my knee was wouldn't kill anything so I think we've got enough length here and width I need about 20 inches across but I want to make sure let me cut these sleeves off first all right here goes the logic you, you know how that goes I took some quilt clips and clipped the edge of the hemline to make sure that they were meeting eh, somewhat uh, significantly they they're they're um, they're curved and they'll be a little longer in the front sometimes than the back but they they meet pretty well so the shirt is nice and straight the only thing that's giving me any kind of buckling in this process is the pleat that's in the back but I'm not too terribly worried about that because the rest of it's feeling pretty straight so I need 22 inches right but I'm willing to go with 21 I think 21 would be more than enough and in short of what I usually wear is not not killer so this is 22 right here right past this button if I make it to that button at 21 it's about 21 and a half I'm going to use this line, the 31 line on 31 inch line on my grid, and I'm going to use the 22 inch mark on my uh, tape measure. So that's what I want to get to right there. That'll give me about 21 and a half inches, which will be a half inch or, or less for the seam allowance. Now I need at least 20 inches across, though. So if I come over here to the 31 inch mark again. I can get to about this point and about this point these stripes right here so if I measure across from those stripes I think it was this one I got 20 inches and 20 inches is what I need to go around the the bottom and I may be able to get a little more out of it we'll see but the first cut I want to make is across here and again using the 31 inch mark down here with the 22 inch mark on my tape it's right at this button so I'm going to take this button off and it's it's um, right there at the 9 inch mark up here so I'm going to use that to cut off the bottom half of this shirt it's all sounding really complicated but I'm just trying to get as good a measurement as I can without um, sacrificing too much fabric so I'll be able to use as much as we need and of course if it comes out where it's too short on the sides uh, or it's not wide enough then I can add the sleeves back in to the sides I've done that before I think I'd I think I did it on the pink dress as a matter of fact so let me take this button off real quick you'd think ouch or poke myself in the finger whatever the case may be and this way I can go ahead like I said I'm gonna keep this pretty lined up I'm gonna run across here and get our first cut minus the sleeves of course 
that'll let us start figuring out if it's going to fit on the shirt itself, on the sweater. Okay, that's our collar gone. This is going to be our skirt. And now we just got to kind of size it up on the, and, and I might be able to, I don't know, I might be able to utilize this and leave this as a little hole. I mean, it, it really wouldn't matter if it was not sewn directly to the sweater. The only thing I'm worried about it is it being bulky and I don't want that to happen. So, cause this sweater's kind of thin. So let's see if it fits our needs. So let's see what the sweater will be like. Let's just look at the bottom half of the sweater. Actually, yeah. That will be the 20 inches I need. So I should be able to take from this down and put it on the shirt and I should be able to take off this portion that still got the armhole in it and not lose any fabric that would be necessary to cover this width. Stick with me y'all. All right, let me straighten this up a bit and then I'll start cutting on the sides. Here's our sweater top. Here's the second half of our sweater top. And if we want to put all this together, including the skirt all at once, I've got this part turned right side out. I've got the bottom portion that will go down here turned wrong side out because what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this piece into the bottom. So essentially I'm lining up sides, side seams, and that will be how we put together, back together, our bottom and top. Okay, so I will use some, probably some quilt clips to put this together. Now, we want to include in this one stitch all the way around, which I think I'm going to put it on the sewing machine, and then I may serge it afterwards, but I want to put it on the sewing machine and just make sure I get it right. And I didn't think about making this wider, like flaring, so I may or may not take these seams out and add what we're going to see. I'm just, I've just been thinking about it. So again, this is wrong side out. And I'm going to do the same thing with it. I'm going to put all of this inside of it where our seams are meeting. So this is the raw seam of our shirt opposite of the, of the hem. We're going to meet side seams, and when we meet the side seams, there may be a little wiggle room in the side seams because the front's a little smaller than or shorter than the back, but essentially we're going to be doing this. So we have all the layers together, right sides together here, and this essentially is going to be a right side together as well because it'll come past the end of the shirt and you'll see this at the end. So I'm going to go sew around, I'm going to clip it first, and then I'm going to go sew around and we'll see what we got and whether or not we need to add some fabric to the side.
let's run this around on the machine and at least get an idea of whether or not it's going to fit and whether or not we need to add fabric. I just wasn't thinking about it being at an angle. So, I think I'm going to start over here on the side. That'll be best. And I'm going to do it from this, the sweater side, just so I can keep it lined up better, I think. And I'm going to put the foot, presser foot right on that tape that we put, the interfacing or whatever we want to call that. And I'm going to, um, I'm just going to keep that center um, position of my needle, which means it'll probably be um, about, not quite a half inch, maybe more like, um, I don't know, not quite a half inch. But you can make any seam allowance you want. Okay, everybody, this is what it turned out looking like. I'm actually pretty excited, with the exception that I had plans for it to go the other way. But after I finished sewing and took it off the machine, realized I had it backwards. But I'm digging the buttons in the back. So <laughs> happy mistake happens all the time apparently <laughs> so if you like this kind of content if you enjoyed uh, our adventure through this process like subscribe let me know what you think and I'll catch y'all on the flip side of our next project